So you've watched part one and want to show live data in your app with charts and graphs. Just like this. Great. Hey everybody, what's up? I'm Fergie and I'm a UX designer based in London. In this video, I'll show you how to connect charts to a data source using the CoinGecko open API, as well as an Airtable database. It is so much easier than you think. So let's get started. You can find all of the Bravo tags on the master list notion page. And the ones you're going to want to pay attention to for this project are the pie chart and bar chart component tags. To start with, let's go through our XD document where we have our app design. So we have a loading state screen here and it's not actually empty. It has a lotty animation on it. And that will look a little something like this when the app is trying to load in all the data. So instead of showing a Bravo loading screen or a white screen, this is the custom one it will display. We then have this screen here, which is our home screen. This is showing us the trending coins from CoinGecko as a chart. And then we're also using pagination to pull in a list of all of the coins sorted by market cap, again from CoinGecko. We've got a little button here that allows the user to navigate to a trending coins screen so they can see both the chart and a list of information about those coins. Then over here, we have my investment screen. This is a little bit like my wallet. This is going to display a chart coming from Airtable showing all the coins I've invested in and also list them down below. We could then click on one of these coins to see a more detailed view and a daily statement to tell me what my coin investment is worth. So I can see if I'm making a profit or a loss. We then have a virtual card wallet over here and I'll show you how to make that in another video. So now you've seen what we're going to build, let me show you how it is built. Once you have synced your design from Adobe XD, it should appear within your dashboard of Bravo Studio. So in order to bind this to the CoinGecko data, let's first go and set up that API connection. So you'll just need to come to this page and I'll put the URL in the description. You can see there's a few different ways that you can set up an API connection to CoinGecko, including Swagger, which we'll cover in a separate video. But for now, we are just going to use these API connections listed here because it is really, really easy. The first thing we want to set up is that trending graph. So I'm going to scroll down here until I get to trending. So you can see they're all very well organized. And this is a get request. This is going to get the top seven trending coins of the past 24 hours. So all you have to do here is click on this try it out button, execute, and you'll see it gives you this request URL here. And this is what we're interested in. This is what we're going to want to copy. And just below it, you can see what that data response is going to be. So this is all the data that you can get back about each of those seven trending coins. So once you have selected and copied this request URL, you're going to head back into Bravo Studio. You're going to come here to the API collection screen and you're going to create a new collection and just start from scratch. Once you've given your API collection a name, as you can see, mine is called CoinGecko Test. You're going to want to create a new request by hitting this blue button. And then I've already got this set up, but just to show you, you're going to want to make sure it is a get request and just paste that URL right here. And that is all you need to do. If we hit the send button, we get the data back. We can see it's successful. We can see it's bringing a list of all seven. So just go ahead and select the data points that you're going to want to be able to display within your app. So you can see this is the data set I have now created and that is ready to go. So I can come back to my screen here and I want to display that in this chart here of trending coins. So I'm going to open my trending chart group here. This is my container. And then you'll see here that whenever you're using the chart tag, this is what it's going to look like when you come to buy the data. You get this little symbol here. So you're going to want to select that layer and then connect it to that API collection we have just set up. So remember mine is called CoinGecko test. I want it to connect to that get request. And then because it is a list, we want it to show the list of all of the coins. So show that record. Then we have a few extra settings for charts and graphs. So you can set the color. This is obviously not something we are pulling in that request. So 
I'm just going to leave it blank and it will use a default colour. But for the name, I want this to display each coin name. So that for me is the coin item ID. And then the value, and this is what I want the graph to show. So if it's a bar chart, this is what I want the bar to show. This is going to be the market cap. So once you've set those settings, your graph will now work. Next on this screen, we have our coins by market cap, and this is a long list that we're going to be implementing the pagination for. Bravo has a help document page all about what pagination is and how you can use it. It's essentially a lazy loading. So you get to the end of the list and it will load in the next items for you. This way you're loading them on demand rather than all up front. So it is going to be a lot quicker, especially if you're trying to load in a lot of data. So head back over to CoinGecko. This is where we're going to get this information from. And because I am interested in market cap, I am going to be using this get request right here, the get coins market. So this will list all of the supported coins. It's going to tell me the price, the market cap, the volume. It's going to give me a lot of data, but I'm specifically interested in the market cap. So you'll see when you hit the try it out button, you get all of these different options and parameters to set. So just follow the guidance here and enter what is best for your application. For me, I want the target currency to be in US dollars. I want to sort the records by market cap descending and for the pagination, I want to have 10 results. So it's going to load in 10 results. And then once I scroll to the bottom of that, it will load in another 10. And I want it to be able to do this about five times so that in total I have 50 results. And I want to see the price change percentage data within 24 hours. Then you're just going to go ahead again and hit execute. And you're going to have this request URL right here. This is what we need to copy and paste back into Bravo. So similarly to how you did before, you're going to hit the blue button to create a new request. It is a get request and you're going to paste that URL here. Now to set up the pagination, you're going to want to click on the pagination tab just below it and enter a few settings. And this needs to match back to CoinGecko. So you're going to set the type to page and then page side parameter is per page. And if you see, that's what we set here. So per page, that's our parameter. Next, it's going to ask, what does it start with? I'm going to leave this set to one. The page parameter is page, which we know because that's this integer here. Then our default page size is 10 because that's the setting we entered just here and just put a full stop in the results path. We don't need to add anything there. So hit send to make sure this all works. And you see we receive all of our data and just go through and select the data points that you want to be able to bind to your design. I've selected mine, so this is the data set that I'm ending up with. Let's go back to our design screen and add the bindings. So I'm going to select my market cap line item here and connect it to our CoinGecko test market caps. And because this is a list, I'm going to select that data. And now for each of the item in the list, I need to bind it to the data again. So you can see here, I have the image icon, the symbol, the name, and the market cap. So a trick I do in XD is I will name my layers, telling myself what I need to bind to this text layer. So here, I know that I need to bind the market cap and this just makes this a lot simpler. So I've done that, the name, the coin symbol, and also the image. So this screen is ready to go. Now remember, we also have this button here so that our users can see the details of the trending coins. Let's do that screen next. So similarly to how we did the graph before, we're going to do exactly the same here. And then we have our line item so I'm going to bind that again to my trending seven API connection that we've just set up using CoinGecko. And then for each text layer and the image icon here, we're going to connect those two. So I'm going to bind the symbol, the value, and also the icon image. This screen is now also ready to go. Next up, we have my investment screen. Now this is a little bit like a wallet. This is showing me what crypto coins I'm holding and what their current value is. So you can see we have space here for our chart and then we also are going to be listing the details of each item down below. Now for this, because it's simulating sort of wallet data, I'm going to be showing you how to set this up using an Airtable database. 
So as you can see here, I just have an Airtable with a few different databases inside that. I have one here of my investments overview. This is how I'm creating that overview chart. I'm listing all of the coins that I hold and what their value is, as well as a few other things like the icon that I'm gonna to wanna to use when I've got the list version of this. And you can see that for the chart with setting the color, I just have this extra column here in my database with a hex color code. So in my pie chart, whenever it displays the XRP, it is gonna be in this color. And that is how you can customize the color values within charts. Now you'll notice I have this extra column here with links to another record. This is how I'm going to be displaying the nested list. If you want to see a bit more detail about nested list, then definitely come and check out this page over here. So what this is connected to is a list of all of my coins. So this is basically a list of each of my coins value on different days. So for each coin, I'm showing a history of just six days. So a week, I can see what profit or loss I have made each day. You can see I've got them here sorted by date. You could easily sort it by coin if that's a lot easier. But the reason I have it sorted by date is because this is how I want it to be displayed when it is loaded into Bravo. So if you don't sort the fields here in Airtable, when you pull this data and load it into your design with Bravo Studio, it might show in a bit of a mixed up order and not how you expect it. So this is how you can fix that because I want mine sorted by date. I've done that here so I know it will display correctly. So what data do I have here? Apart from the date, I've got the value of that coin for that day and I've also got the color that refers to this coin so that in our charts I can recognize which crypto coin it is. Now over here you're going to notice I have two different columns. We have a link here so I've created a link to that investments table and we're allowing it to link to multiple records. So to set this up all you have to do is add a new field, link to another record, I'm going to select the investments table again make sure this is turned on and then you'd hit create next you have to tell it which fields it is you want to be looking up so i'm specifically linking mine based on the coin name so i'm going to select that one and add one field and you'll see it creates these two columns for me which is how i've got these two here and then all you have to do is add which one you want it to connect to so on the 12th of the second, I know this balance and this color value is linked to XRP. So I've selected that. You can select multiple, but I don't need to do that for the purpose of our design. So when this is an empty cell, just hit that plus button and select. And then it will also generate this column for you. So you don't need to worry about that, but just make sure that they're all matching. So to use this in Bravo, we're going to set up this API connection using the Airtable wizard. So you can create a new collection and select Airtable wizard. It's then gonna ask you for the URL. So enter the share URL and then it will ask you for your API key. So that's this URL right here. And then it will ask for your API key and you just need to get this from your Airtable account. So click on your avatar, account, and it is this key right here that you're going to want to copy and paste. You should then get something a little bit like this, where Bravo has set up all of those get requests for you automatically to each table. And you have both a list view and a detailed view. Now we are most concerned with our investments list and also our coins list. And for our coins list, we're going to want to apply a filter. And this is because it is going to be a nested list. So to make setting up our filter that little bit quicker, I'm going to show you how you can utilize the example shown on the help page. If you just scroll down to here, you'll see there's an example URL. And we're just going to copy this from after the question mark up until the end. And then we're going to need to change where it has region name to be the relevant field for our database. So you can see I've added a question mark here and then pasted in that filter. So that's right here. And instead of region name, for me, I have added coin and coin name. Coin is setting a new variable and coin name. So you need to make sure those are the two column names you're entering there. And then you'll notice we have an ampersand because we're also applying a view. So we're applying a grid view. And this is again, just to ensure that our data displays 
in that sorted order that we have in Airtable. So to do that, you do the ampersand and then view equals grid percentage to zero view. And if you want to copy and paste it, simply hit the help tab here, go to API documentation. I'm going to use my coins table list. And this is where you can get that grid view from. So just copy this and paste it into Bravo. We're then going to need to enter a test value. So I'm going to enter coin and sol. I'm going to hit send. And you'll see this has brought our data back for us. It's received the data. And I can see this is the data I've selected for my data set. And if you click on query parameters, it's also automatically set up the filter and the view for us. This is an alternative way of doing that if you prefer and find that easier. So now this is set up, let's bind it to our design. Let's start off with our overview chart. I'm going to connect this to the Airtable we've just set up, select my investments list and show records, and then connect each of these settings here to the correct field. So the value is the value today. For me, the name is going to be the coin name and color. We're going to connect to the color column with our hex code. And that's it for the chart and then line item. Similarly to how we've done before, connecting this to our Airtable database, the investments list, and then each item connecting it to its relevant data. Now, since this is a nested list, we're going to be able to select one of these line items and go into that detailed view. Again, set up the chart the same as before. We do not need to tell Bravo in the binding which coin data to display because the filter is going to do that for us. If I select Sol from the list of the previous screen, it is going to display the Sol data for us here automatically. So bind your chart just as before. And then again, we have our line item for our sort of statement. So I'm going to be binding just the date and the value it was worth on that day. So you can see I've got date and value. So now all of the binding is set up to the correct data source. Let's preview it using Bravo Vision. Now you can easily show live data in your charts. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more. Bye.